Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Navy, we're going to be reacting to the very last episode of the Making a Sailor uh, documentary series here on the YouTubes. Now, I've really enjoyed this series so far. I think it's a very uh, good depiction of what happens in boot camp or Navy basic, whatever you want to call it. They've definitely put a lot of hard work into this. And I'm really loving it so far, and I can't wait to see the end when they go through battle stations and graduate. So, that said, guys, um, let's get on with it. Alright, guys, so here we are. Episode 6, the final episode in Boot Camp, Making a Sailor. It's only 10 minutes long, so uh, let's begin. <sighs> Uh, this is the fun part. Oh man, the compartment still looks the same as when I went through. Ah. Ah. That's what's up. The who ya is strong in this episode. I love it. What's up? That's awesome. I can't hear you! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Take Final week of boot camp, man. This is where the real shit goes down. Battle stations. You now have two minutes to complete as many proper push-ups as you can. Or the Are final you PFA, ready? whatever. All right, so actually the final PFA comes first. I'm sorry. I kind of jumped the gun there. But yeah, they got to pass their final physical fitness assessment, showing they're physically fit enough to be sailors. Let's get on with it. Ready up. Begin. Pump them out, pump them out. That's what's up. I really do. That's what's like, up. All the hard work paid off. Man. It's a huge weight of my shoulder. Yeah. Mm. I'm coming from battle stations. That's for sure. Yeah. Battle stations about to get the best of me right now. That's right. Hydrate. Oh, it's only seven failures, man. That kind of sucks. Take all of that. Work together One as a test team. Lab. Battle stations. Execute the What's mission. Up? And the next time I see you, you'll be sailors. What's up? Who ya neighbor? Who ya neighbor? Battle stations is a crucible event. They yeah. go in as recruits and they come out sailors. But the most nerve wracking part about going into battle stations was knowing oh that God. if we don't pass battle stations, there is no way that we will graduate. Yeah. I remember this day so well, man. That's why I'm just, I'm smiling like through the whole episode because I remember this day. It's just, it's such an eventful moment. And I'm, you know, just welling with so much pride and so much friggin' hoo ya right now <laughs> for these guys going through battle stations. Although it, it is kind of ironic because we did have to sign a, uh, a page 13 saying we can't talk about battle stations, but I guess it's okay for them to film it, right? So. I don't know what it's worth anymore, but uh, it's definitely a very exciting time. Very exciting time, and I remember being super pumped up to go to battle stations, because I knew it was the last thing. Once I got that done, I'll be able to see my family and be able to call myself a United States Sailor. So, let's continue. Oh, yeah, battle stations! Yeah. All we do one, two. I'm really pumped. I'm just really excited about this because around eight, um, yeah. eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Alright. It's, it's, it, it's an all night three. event. So. You can maintain that motivation all throughout the night. As they'll say. Okay, you're tired now. There's gonna be nothing at zero four, zero five. That's that's zero right. Hundred percent. And they definitely put a lot of effort into making this as real as possible, for the most part. Um, the, the pier is actually a lot cleaner than it is in real life, and there's not a bunch of random things around. But uh, And I was stationed on a destroyer, too, by the way, guys. And, you know, it is a replica, so th there are some differences, obviously. But, you know, it's a pretty convincing replica, I'll put it that way. So Battle Stations is the... Final test before you can graduate boot camp. Yeah. It is 
all night long. And it's everything. basically all of the classes that you've had and all the training that you've had since you came to boot camp, just all crammed into one. We, we try to we try to keep, keep everybody in line, try to keep everybody away, try to keep everybody as less stressed as, as possible. Yeah. We keep everybody happy. Oh yeah. Uh, and I think we did a good job. Yeah, look at that it's birthing not area. Much you know? that I can say about Battle Station is just that it's very tiring. It's very. It's oh yeah, and like a lot of people, what they do in order to stay awake is they, you know, keep one knee on the deck just to kind of be at the ready. So if you're wondering why they're all like taking a knee, that's why. Um, it helps them stay awake. Stressful. Um, ready for GQ, baby. Shit's happening. All right. You got to rely on uh, your mag sprinks, dude. Next oh to you my to god, sure the mag sprinks. I got a, I got a story about the mag sprinks. So, um, we had one dude who uh, was in our division that was leading the uh, the event because they they put people in charge of it. You know, PYCs, I guess, basically. Um, and this one dude, Gregson. He really tried, man, but he was just like <laughs> he was out of his element. And we we were doing the best we could. We managed to get get by and pass it, but uh we almost failed it cuz of him actually. So, but it is what it is. You all got through it e efficiently. It made me kind of think about my job and my role um, as far as the Navy goes. It really made me appreciate how important it is for every single member on that ship to know exactly what to do and where to go and how to get things done efficiently. Mm. That way uh, you're not yeah, just looking that. for that one firefighter, that one DC man to come and save the day, so to say. So I really appreciated that part and that aspect of my training because yeah. everybody needs to know that. Where's That's the for other sure. Guys? Hurry up! And double sided ladder wheels. What the hell is this shenaniganry? <laughs> and anyway, maybe that's how it is on big decks, but that sure as hell ain't on Destroyer, I'll tell you that. One day left. We, we, everybody um, is just really excited that we get to graduate Damn. tomorrow. Louise's. And Damn, Louise got that compartment cough, though. It's like kennel cough. I call it compartment cough. Like, everybody gets fucking sick, and they lose their voice, and they all sound like that, so it happens. Good to see our family, and, and everything is done pretty much. That's, that's the main thing. We're happy to be done with this. Damn, zero failures. That's what's up. That's what's up, 229. Yeah, indeed. You'll hear people say boot camp is a filter, not a pump. We're supposed to evaluate these people and uh, decide whether they're sailors or not. But yeah. I would refuse to lower the standard to help someone achieve the goal that, in my opinion, is one of the greatest things you can do, and that's become a sailor. 100%. So all the recruits. Oh my God, 100%. Completely agree with the O1 on this. Um, and also, this moment right here, man, you'll see pretty much everybody crying. Like, you'd be hard pressed to find a dry eye in in this ceremony when you trade in your recruit ball cap for a Navy ball cap, you know, they got proud to be American playing. And, you know, I told myself when I received my Navy ball cap, I wasn't going to cry. I was going to, you know, be a man and just take my Navy ball cap. Thank whoever gave it to me and just carry it on smartly. But nah, it's just fucking tears streaming down. And, you know, I freaking already see handing me my ball cap, but I was like, thank you, Betty officer. So, you know, don't go trying to be, you know, all tough, tough person, you know, thinking, oh, I'm not going to cry. It's, you know, it's just a ball cap, you know, but like when you get there and proud to be an American's playing and, you know, you just completed battle stations and you get that Navy ball cap, you know, you're going to be balling, man. You know, and it's okay. It's okay to cry. You know, this is a, this is an okay moment to cry. So let it flow, let it flow. If I do make it through my divisions, I'll be proud of and feel like I'm really helping out the fleet. Well, for the captain yeah. ceremony, I got the chills. I got the goosebumps. Yeah. And um, Luis, I, didn't tear, I kind of tear up a little bit. I'm not even going to lie. Um, it's, it's, it's emotional, you know. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a long eight weeks. 100%. All the things that 100%. we've been through. It was kind of 
got emotional. It was nice finally being able to shake my RDC's hands and shake my fellow shipmates' hands and trade in that recruit ball cap and finally get that ball cap that's been sitting in my rack since the day we got here. So it just it feels like a sense of accomplishment. Um, just that whole ceremony and, and switching over. <laughs> it feels great. Yeah. I thought coming into the Navy as someone Such who had mood, already man. finished college Feel and it. been on my own and worked on my own job that this experience wouldn't change me as much as it has. But I can I can see the difference in it. I can see the difference the way I talk to people. It gives you so much more respect for yourself and so much more respect for other people. 100%. Oh, I remember oh, this. Really oh, my me. God. I feel like it was used. I, I got a, a forget story about this, actually. So... We had a lot of people, because uh, you're standing there for a while during the graduation ceremony. Oh, and I guess these are the new dress whites. Nice. They got the friggin' the fringe, like with the the dress blues. So that's really nice. I like that. That looks good. You know. Um, but in any event, uh, we had a whole bunch of people drop out um, from the ceremony. So, like, if you are shaking or look like you're going to pass out because you're standing at attention for like a really long time. So some people are at risk of passing out and they have like this guy kind of at parade rest, like walking back and forth between the lines, looking for that guy. That's kind of or girl, whoever that's kind of like, you know, shaking and like, Oh my God. And you know, they kind of tap them and like pull them. I think some people call them like the grim reapers or something like that. That's what we called them. Because, like, I would just kind of see them at the corner of my eye. And then the next minute, you know, like, somebody ne next to me is gone. I'm like, the, the, fuck, the fuck just happened? <laughs> but uh, I managed to stand through the whole thing. And I feel pretty damn proud about that. It's, it's just a change in my life. You know, when you change, you don't really notice it, but other people do. Absolutely. 100%. Came have made me uh, have made a product of myself that I want everybody to see. A personality that I never knew that I could have, and I'm really proud of myself. There is one percent of the United States that joins the military, yeah. and to be that one percent in the Navy mm -hmm. is a sense of pride that you carry with you. Our day-to-day -day job is a tough job. Mm -hmm. You have to be tough. That's what boot camp does. We create tough sailors so that ultimately our Navy is what the nation needs. Yep. The challenge to come up here and do this job and to make civilians into sailors, it is the hardest job I've ever had, but it's the most rewarding job I've ever had. It's, it's a feeling that you can't really explain to someone until they come up here, put the rope on and, and graduate a division. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to not only what the Navy has for me, but what I can also give back to. So just, I know I'm starting to get a little emotional here, but just as a small point of contention, because I notice a lot of these, these people have like the, uh, the cool, you know, black glasses and stuff. And uh, I'm kind of pissed that they don't have the friggin' BCGs anymore. You know, even though they look disgusting. But, uh, you know, it's kind of a rite of passage, I think. But, eh, whatever. <laughs> Just kind of grumpy old veteran back in my Navy. <laughs> to the Navy and to my country, I'm excited about being able to serve and say that I did serve, which wasn't necessarily at the top of my list when I walked into the recruiting station. Honestly, I was thinking more about, oh, I want to go to college or go back to college. I want the benefits. I want this. I want that. But after being here and after seeing how passionate that my RDCs were about being in the service and how much this means to them, it really made me redirect my attention for my reasoning of being here. I just, I want to be here. I want to make my parents proud. I want to make my RDCs proud. So I just want to go out there and give my best. And at the end of the day, whether my time ends at four years and my time ends at 30 years. I want to say that my time that I served in the Navy, I gave everything I could have given, and that was it. I finished Navy boot camp. <laughs> God, I love that. 
I uh, really finished Navy boot camp, wow. Wow. I never thought I would have said that. Yes, I am a United States sailor. It's kind of surreal. It's a good and feeling. I'm, just, I'm so good proud feeling. of myself. I'm proud of the journey that uh, that I had to take to get here and all of the challenges and obstacles. It just makes this moment so much greater, knowing how far I had to come. Yeah, to be absolutely. Here. I, I am a United States sailor now, and uh, I, I feel completely different. Uh, I didn't come here a uh, United uh, States sailor, but I'm leaving a sailor now. And it's an amazing feeling, honestly. Great feeling. Oh man, I just uh, so much emotion in this episode. You know, I just because I'm I've I've been there with these guys. You know, I was there. You know, through the whole thing, and uh, you know to hear that Liberty Call, Liberty Call at the end of uh, the ceremony and meeting with your family after eight weeks is um, definitely a moment I won't forget. You know, and uh, anyway, after um, graduation ceremony, <clears throat> they start shipping people out to wherever they need to go. Um, for me, I went across the street to TSC Great Lakes to go to ATT, which is Apprentice Technical Training. It's a basic electronics course. Um, a lot of different rates go there. Uh, it's most known for uh, the Corman School, HMA School. Um, they also have OSs, BMs, um, for, but for me, since I was an STG, um, they had me go to the tech school and then they also have, uh, like ETs, FCs, I, ICs go to that, you know, the building and stuff like that. Um, and that's where my, uh, where my Navy journey started, you know? Hard to believe, you know, like, because I graduated August 20th, 2010. She's being an, she's an IS? Damn. An aviation administrator, man. I think that's AZ? No, it's Yeoman. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, all these people, they did a, a fantastic job with this. Fantastic job. So yeah, that was uh, Boot Camp Making a Sailor, Episode 6. The last episode in this series. And I didn't think I would get as uh, as emotional in this last episode as I did. Um, it was just, you know, I, I felt for those guys, you know. Because, you know, I was, I was there. And, you know, I, you know, went through battle stations and... You know, I had a lot of moments where I didn't think I would make it, you know, all throughout boot camp because, you know, I never thought of myself as, you know, the typical military person, you know, that would go in who's all like gung ho and, you know, is an expert marksman and, you know, it's just like super buff and things like that. You know, I never thought someone like me could could be a United States sailor. And there's a lot of a lot of trying moments uh, in boot camp for me, um, especially with the physical stuff. You know, I was, you know, <laughs> not the most physically gifted person out there. Um, and you know, I just kept on going, kept on, kept on at it, and uh, showed a lot of determination and motivation to get through it. And you know, if I if I can do it, I'm convinced anybody with enough determination can uh, can get through it. You know, just you know, it's it's not easy. You know, like they say, only one percent of uh, America has served in the uh, in the military. Just the military in general, not even the Navy specifically. And um, you know, it's not easy. And you know, like what EO One was saying, you know, it's a it's a filter, not a pump. You know, they don't want just any old buddy serving. But you know, you just got to go in there and 
do your best and just keep at it. And, you know, even, even if you fail, at least, you know, you know that you went out swinging and, you know, you might end up surprising yourself if you just keep at it. You know, I certainly surprised myself. I didn't think I would graduate boot camp, you know, I didn't think I would, you know, have been in the military for five years and, you know, been able to see all these different countries and to, to experience that life, which it definitely had a lot of very challenging moments for me. And, uh, it, it wasn't easy. It was not easy, but you know, it's definitely, definitely a life full of adventure. And, uh, God, I, I didn't think I would get so emotional with this last episode. It just, I don't know, it just, everything just kind of came at me at once, you know, just all the emotion of graduating, going through the schools, going to my first ship, deployment, second ship, countless underways, tons of fun in Japan then coming back to America when it was all said and done. And, uh, yeah, man, definitely glad, glad I did it, you know. Despite everything, it was still uh, a journey well, uh, well traveled, so. But that's enough, uh, the rambliness from the old Andy San Sam Adishta. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me kind of ramble on about stuff like that. But uh, yeah, man, this was a fantastic series. If you guys want to know what Navy boot camp is like, especially nowadays, you know, even I learned something and I went through the damn thing. Uh, but it's a lot different now in 2018 or whenever you're watching this video versus when I went in back in 2010. You know, it's shit, it's nearly a decade ago when I first went in. That's incredible to think about. But um, I definitely want to do more of these uh, Andy Talks Navy episodes. Uh, I know the reaction videos are kind of cheap and easy to do, but I think that there's a lot of uh, good talking points in those videos, and I think I can definitely get out some good information doing these types of react videos, you know, because I miss talking about the Navy, man. What can I say, you know? <laughs> um and if it if it gives me a, a a chance an opportunity to to share what I know to share my knowledge experience anything to help out future sailors um, future veterans whatever you know I'm more than happy to do it you know it's just you know I've seen so many people in the uh, the YouTube military community help me out you know J T Suits is a classic example of that you know he was the one that inspired me to come back to doing navy videos because i got burned out anyway i'm getting i'm getting all verklempt up here so i will stop for reals this time uh so with that said guys this is the andy san sign up for now here at uh andy talks navy hq uh thanking you guys for tuning into this video and uh for my other stuff and if you guys have any suggestions for things i should react to or or topics that you want me to cover, you know, military related. Um, feel free to uh, leave me something, some little uh, little comment, love down below in the boopy de boops, and uh, I'll be sure to get on it. But uh, as always, guys, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.